Today is Monday, December 4th, and I'm just wondering if the college football playoff committee got the final four correct in their selections. Actually, I'm not wondering at all. I don't think they did. And now, a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Fluent Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. What's damaged your roof? Hail, water, wind, maybe just aid? Oh, Hail Roofing is where to turn. They've provided the best options, advice, and solutions, be it residential or commercial. For more than a decade now, you can trust Oh, Hail to restore your property expertly. Oh, Hail. That's O-H-H-H-A-I-L. Ohail.com. With seasonings, there seem to be so many. And then they just sit in your spice cabinet forever. That's not true of goodness steak season. I know the name steak suggests that it's very good on steak, which it is. But goodness steak seasoning is so versatile. Use it on veggies, burgers, soups, even popcorn. Get it by going to the website bringthetasty.com. Goodness, this seasoning is good. Did you ever have to make a decision? where you knew, no matter what you did, you were going to hurt someone. Your choice was who you were going to hurt. That was the quandary faced by the college football playoff committee. They actually had a math problem, something we learned very early in school. Five into two won't go. After the championship games of college football for the conferences, two teams had punched their ticket for sure. Michigan and Washington finished as unbeaten champions of the Big Ten and the Pac-12. That left two spots open in the Final Four and five deserving teams who could have gotten in. 13-0 Florida State and one-loss teams from Alabama, Texas, Georgia, and Ohio State. No matter what the decision there were going to be three unhappy teams left out of the Final Four. But does this mean the committee got it correct? Does this mean they can't be second-guessed, perhaps correctly? Michigan and Washington should be one and two. But the committee put Texas in at number three and Alabama in at number four, meaning the college football playoff championship semifinals will be Michigan versus Alabama, and Texas versus Washington. Left out were Florida State, Georgia, and Ohio State. Let's look at the decision. Let's look at the left out. Poor Ohio State. For most of the season, they ranked up there as number two or three in the country, and they lost once, once, to the number one rated team in the country, Michigan and they lost by six points. They had a terrific season, and a one-loss Big Ten team usually gets in, but they wound up being seventh in the rankings, and I really can't dispute that from the committee's standpoint. Here we get into paper-thin differences with Florida State, Texas, Alabama, and Georgia. Were it me, Florida State and Alabama would have gotten in Georgia would have ranked fifth, and Texas would have ranked sixth. I can't imagine why Florida State got left out. Actually, I can't imagine, and it's not fair. They were kept out of the Final Four because of one injury. That's right. Not any lost games. One injury. They were 11-0 when quarterback Jordan Travis, really good player, broke his leg. So Florida State then had to do its last two games with their backup quarterback. Actually, they got only one game with that backup quarterback. 
Matt Rodenmaker came in, stepped in, and they won the game at Florida and covered the spread. Now, the only reason I mention that is when you cover a spread, that means you outperformed the expectations of you in that game. But Rodenmaker suffered a concussion. So into the conference championship game, Florida State had to use their number three quarterback, a freshman named Brock Glenn. And they beat Louisville for the ACC title and again covered the spread, meaning they again outperformed what people thought they would do. That's the key. Using the number one and number two quarterbacks and then the number three quarterback, Florida State did not collapse. And by the way, had they gotten into the championship playoffs, that number two quarterback, Rodemaker, would have been back. It is the first time ever that an unbeaten Power Five team did not get into the Final Four. Now, the choice between Alabama and Georgia, for me, is very difficult. But Alabama just did win that game by three points. And there isn't any question of one thing, that Alabama got better and better and better during the season. Of all the top teams in the country, Alabama made the most improvement from the early season to the conference playoff games. Georgia, well, Georgia became a kind of victim of their own success. They had that one loss to Alabama, three-point game. But late in the season, Georgia didn't slaughter opponents like people thought they should. They played with their food against South Carolina and Georgia Tech. And that apparently was held against Georgia. It's the first time ever that a number one ranked team going into the conference playoffs lost a game and still did not get into the Final Four. Going into the Alabama game, Georgia had won 29 in a row, then lost the three-point game to Alabama. So the two-time defending national champion, Georgia, will not get a chance to defend that title again. I had the biggest problem with Texas getting in. It appears to me that the committee heavily weighted an early September Texas win against Alabama. Now, were Texas to play that Alabama team again today, who would win the game? I have my doubts, quite honestly, because as we said, Alabama's gotten better and better and better. But of those four one-loss teams, the committee had to decide between Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, and Texas. Texas had the worst loss to Oklahoma. Now, did they have the best win? Well, Alabama's win over Georgia was better. And Florida State never lost a game. And by the way, if the committee held against Florida State, the fact that with backup quarterbacks, they didn't churn the ball up and down the field, but still won late in the season. And Georgia, who didn't beat up South Carolina and Georgia Tech like they should have. Well, look at Texas. They beat a very poor Houston team by seven points. They beat a 7-5 and five Iowa State team by 10. They beat a solid but not special Kansas State team by 3. And a 5-7 and seven TCU team by just 3 points. But back to the committee and the thankless job they had. No matter who they left out of those 5 deserving teams, only 2 could get in and 3 would not. That would lead to disappointment, to disagreement. If we ever had a year where we needed at least an eight-team playoff, this is it. Because in this year, we actually might say one of the left-outs 
could have won the National College Football Championship. Today's episode has been brought to you by Fluent Financial, by O'Hell Roofing, and by Goodness Steak Seasoning. Just Wondering is a production of DSP Media for FanStream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at FanStreamSports.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Just Wondering. If you enjoyed it, please hit follow. Then each episode every weekday will be delivered straight to you. And if we might ask one more favor, please share it with friends. I'm Norm Hitzkus, and every day I'll be just wondering about something. And I'm Mary Hitzkus, and I'm just wondering too. 